The 3GPP Release 15 standard has just been frozen at the organization's plenary in California. Adrian, what exactly has been agreed and what has been ratified at the meeting? Very good question. Um, perhaps we should first uh, wind the clock back a little bit and, and explain what it is we said we would agree. Um, if we go back to September 2015, uh, we had a very large workshop also in the United States, in Phoenix actually. 550 people from various um, segments of industry, including academia and governments, got together to, to decide how can we write this 5G standard in time for 2020. That was a, a, a deadline that was imposed on us. It wasn't really debatable. At that time we said, well, 5G standards description is too big an animal to describe in one go. So we decided we would have to do that in two phases. We said, first phase, we must deliver by the middle of 2018, and the second phase, we would deliver by the end of 2019. We said that the first phase would be focused on operators' first priorities, which at that time we thought was evolved mobile broadband, and the second phase would cover the other major use case families, the uh, enhanced sorry, the ultra-reliable low-latency communications and the massive machine-type communications as a second priority. Um, we also said that we should cover uh, the description such that it would be usable for other industry sectors with which we've never engaged before. And the examples given were agriculture, health, automotive, these sorts of things. So that's what we set out to achieve way back in 2015. If we look at where we are now in June 2018, We've done exactly what we said we would do. We've completed the first phase of 5G, which we call Release 15. You may recall that there was an, an early appearance back in last December of the new radio element of that in non-standalone mode because there was an urgent need from some operators to have early availability of those standards. What's happened this week, though, is the completion of that phase one of 5G standards, which we said we would deliver by this date. Great, so we are now able, or the industry is now able to develop solutions to a standard for not only working with LTE, but also using a, a 5G new core as well. Indeed, the, the first phase includes the new radio, it includes the new core network, uh, and the likelihood is that the very first implementations of 5G that you see in the marketplace will be based on this release 15. Because the industry has requested this um, operational mode with, with LTE and a new core, um, having NSA and SA modes, does that mean that vendors and telcos will have to double up the effort, double up the resources because they're effectively running two networks? Yeah, that's a very interesting point. Um, as a standards body, we don't deep tell our operator members how they should deploy standards. What we have to do is provide uh, the possibility for them to deploy 5G in the various modes in which they tell us they wish to deploy. So if you look at the architectural options within the standard, there are many of them. They're not all complete yet. What we've done is focus on the first priorities. But we know, for example, that the majority of operators who have an existing core, an existing radio network, they want to enhance that by adding this new radio to that existing structure. So that's an obvious first case point. But we also have to enable greenfield deployment. We may have operators who want to deploy the new radio attached to the new core. So we've enabled that to take place as well. But there are many other combinations and options which operators may have. As a standards body, it's our duty to ensure that standards are available to, for them to, to choose those options should they wish to do so. Now you mentioned that early on in the process a number of vertical industries were identified as possible use cases and businesses um, for 5G. Have we made sufficient effort to engage with those verticals on the sort of standardization side and brought them into the development of 5G? I mean, it's a question that's been asked in, in many of the tracks here at this show um, because it was the desire from the very outset that the system we design should be usable by these industry sectors with whom we haven't engaged previously. And history shows that you know, if you want to see who will ultimately deploy your standards, if you look at the community you've come to write those standards, it's a pretty fair chance that 
if they're sending resources to write the standards, they have a strong interest in deploying them. What's happened in the last few months is we've seen some very interesting uh, companies join 3GPP, which come from the agricultural sector, from the automotive sector, from the rail sector, from the satellite sector, from the aeronautical sector. These are and, and companies which you might find um, rather unusual to be joining a standards telecommunications activity. The fact they have joined, I think, is testimony to the fact that we are making some progress in attracting them to come to us. It's early days. It would be wrong for me to give the impression that we have succeeded and the job is done, but we are making good progress, actually, in attracting these industry sectors to come and join us. Once they come to us, that's, that's the first part. The next part is keeping them interested and, and, and attracted to our work. So you, you have to put a lot of effort then into making them feel welcome. Maybe they speak a very different language to us, and I'm sure if you're a tractor manufacturer and you come to a telecommunications standards activity, that the first problem is understanding terminology because it, it, by definition we have you know, different, different word sets. Um, and there's a cultural difference too. I mean, standards bodies work in a very different way in the telecom sector than maybe they do in the agricultural sector. But in summary, I think, yes, we are making very good progress, a long way to go. There are some industry sectors where we really haven't made much progress at all, but, you know, we are working at it. Now, there's obviously a lot of interest at the moment around Release 15 and the activities of 3GPP, but it's not the only 5G work that Etsy is involved in. You've also got a number of other ISGs and, and groups. What's been the progress with the, the other components, if you like, that will make up 5G? I mean, 3GPP never aspires to be the place where all the standards are written. That would be rather foolish. They couldn't possibly do that. It's the place where the standards are aggregated and brought together into a coherent set. So whilst the core functionality of the mobile system may be scripted and defined within 3GPP, um, 3GPP is dependent on standards which are developed by external bodies. If we look at the core network, for, for example, uh, much of the core network is dependent on what's developed in the IETF, for example. Um, if we look at some of the other major uh, building blocks like network functions, virtualization and multi-access edge computing, we've discussed this before, I mean they are coming from the Etsy stable. Mm. And more recently we've seen new activities um, appearing within the, the Etsy footprint, which again will be key building blocks upon which 3GPP is likely to build. And here I'm thinking of uh, zero touch management, for example. If you have um, network functions virtualization and network slicing in its fully um, evolved and mature sense, you couldn't possibly manage that system by human intervention. So there's an activity in Etsy to see, well, how can you manage that by zero uh, touch from the human point of view. Very interesting piece of work, critical I think for the future of um, what could be a very complex network arrangement. Likewise with augmented reality, um, we have an, an activity with Etsy looking at developing a common framework for augmented reality. And these are typical building blocks which may occur in a body like Etsy and then will later be imported to become an inherent part of the 3GPP standard. Great. Well, Adrian, as always, many thanks for the update. It's, it's complicated. There's a lot of ground to cover. There's a lot of elements at play, um, but it's encouraging to see there's, there's been so much progress. Thank you very much. You're most welcome.